Somebody please time me. Um, I see nobody taking notes. There will be a test at the end of this, uh, so I hope you're, 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 you're paying good attention. Uh, just for, uh, for my education, how many of you in this room are Greek? Please raise your hand. That's the majority. How many are not? Okay, very, very few. If we have a Greek audience. How many of you have heard of Continua before? A third, maybe? Okay, so maybe I'll tell you something new. So very quickly, I'd like to talk to you today about four quick, uh, quick elements. I'm going to try to keep to the 15 minutes. Um, uh, please stop me if I don't. Um, uh, and let's start about the Personal Connected Health Alliance. Now, what is the Personal Connected Health Alliance? Um, this is the organization that um, ca came out of the merger of the Continua Health Alliance, the M Health Summit, which is a, uh, an event uh, uh, which is being rechristened and will, ha will, will happen again uh, in December this year, and M Hims. Uh, and and, and, and what, what really happens is, is that Hims has taken Continua under our wings. The Continua Health Alliance no longer exists, however, Continua guidelines still do, and it is now the Personal Connected Health Alliance that is driving the Continua design guidelines forward. The, uh, the Personal Connected Health Alliance also now runs the Continua certification program, um, but in addition to just being about Continua and interoperability, the Personal Connected Health Alliance, or short PCH Alliance, also advances uh, obviously connected health interoperability, uh, advances the policy regulatory market environments, also runs the event, what used to be called the M Health Summit, but is now going to be called the Connected Health Summit. We're a membership organization, we're also, um, so anybody can join us who's interested, uh, anybody can also come to our events. Um, I better use this. This is uh, perhaps the most important slide of, of, of PCHA, uh, of, of Continua. Um, uh, you see at the left side of it, uh, you see the world of devices, uh, sensors that take body uh, uh, physiological parameters and send it, to a, send it to a device, what we call a personal health gateway, which is a hub. I think uh, Charles had a slightly different um, a depiction of it. Um, we think of uh, the personal health devices both as being medical and consumer devices. So regardless of whether they uh, being used in a healthcare environment or whether they are bought by, by, by uh, consumers, uh, customers in a, in a store, we hope that this, this world sooner or later converges. Um, uh, at the left side of it, in the yellow shampoo bottle, um, this is the world of Continua. Um, and as we move into the world of, of services interfaces, of, of health record interfaces, um, that is where we co cooperate with organizations like HL7 and IHE and the various logos that you see in those uh, various shampoo bottles um, uh, demonstrate that. Um, I want to talk to you not so much about the technological, about the technical aspects of, of standards, but about the actual uh, way of getting adopted. Um, I've mentioned before, um, personal connected health is a uh, is a new uh, phenomenon. It is. Uh, it, it reflects the combination, the merging, of, of of consumer electronics and medical device makers. And this is really a world where uh, two worlds, in a sense, collide. We have the consumer, the world of consumer technologies, the world of of of, the, of, of phones and of of other devices that you can buy in a store. Uh, you have fast innovation, quick product life cycles, light regulation. Evidently, the market direct marketing to consumers, you have medical technology which of course focuses on patient safety, is much more, uh, has much more longer, much longer development cycles, life cycles, there's considerable regulation as there should be because it is about your safety uh, and the sale really happens B2B, sale to providers and, and healthcare professionals. Um, so when we thought first of, of how we're getting ourselves adopted, um, we probably used analogies very quickly, very much out of the consumer technology sphere. And I want to use, uh, to, uh, to discuss and to illustrate what we're up against, uh, I want to use an example from consumer technology, which is very much uh, familiar to all of us. I'm talking about USB. Um, when USB was, f was first founded, and, and the parallels are quite remarkable uh, to the uh, Continua Health Alliance, 
um, they address a specific problem. In this case, in the case of USB, it was about connecting devices to computers. Um, it, some of you may be as, as old or older than I am. You will remember the initial uh, computers and what they looked like on their backside. It was anarchy. It was ugly. Um, laptops today couldn't exist with their sleek backsides if uh, these, all of these ports were still around. But they once dominated the backsides of our computers. Um, for every single uh, device that you could think of, you, needed, you had a separate port. Um, so the USB Alliance was founded in 1994, uh, just about the time when I first started using my first PC. Actually, no, I started a little bit earlier, but um, uh, uh, old history. Um, this was, a, this was a, also an industry-led alliance. Uh, the members were the big powerhouses of the day. Intel was, was there, Microsoft, Compaq, DC, other companies later followed. They all had an interest in making devices in this consumer uh, 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 world. Um, the first prototype was, was founded in 95, standards were developed in 96, and then they hit a wall because the makers of devices, the cameras, the printers, uh, whatever devices were around that time, they still had the old ports that they could plug into. So why should I, you know, now make something that I may not be able to sell because there were hardly any computers out there with USB? And the makers of computers therefore said, well, where are the devices uh, that require USB? So we had the classic chicken and egg situation. Nobody wanted to move. And it could have stayed that way had there not be uh, an intervention from an unlikely source. Um, and the intervention was almost godlike. Um, it was Steve Jobs in 1998. Apple, he had just returned back to Apple, and he brought out this device here, this computer. It was an iMac. Uh, the iMac, um, the specific quality of the iMac was it had no more of the old ports. It had only USB. It also had an Ethernet and a couple of others. But um, there were no more of the serial and the parallel and, and the other ports. This was a sleek engine. Uh, and uh, Apple was going strong. It had, it was a, it was a, uh, it had a strong position, particularly in the uh, graphic designer market and in the educational market. So suddenly there was a demand push for USB. These people who bought um, the IMAX, they now wanted USB, they needed USB compliant devices. So as a result, device makers uh, brought, device, uh, brought USB devices to market and then uh, computer makers, then con other con computer makers then also had USB and USB was de facto adopted. And today, of course, uh, we see USB adopted, mandated for, for charging computers. Mini USB is now the de facto standard, the officially endorsed standard for charging computer, uh, telephones. So um, the USB alliance is going strong. Where that, does that leave us? PCHA, the PCH alliance, and Continua. Um, where could a demand push come from in our field? Um, the candidates would be the consumer, but the consumer doesn't really worry about interoperability, about standards. They want functionality. They want something that's fashionable, that, wants, that, 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 that exhibits, that exudes style. So the consumer isn't going to demand certainly continual compliant devices. They want, they want something hot, something trendy. The patients, they very often get personal connected devices as part of treatment. So it's a doctor, it's a healthcare provider that provides it for them. They don't want to pay anything extra. They'll take what, what, um, what uh, uh, the, the healthcare provider is willing to provide at low or no cost. And obviously they are concerned about safety, quality of life, of course. They're eager, depending on, on their computer literacy and other factors, uh, to use these. But actually, they may actually also prefer to still stay in the, in the hospital. Um, the healthcare providers, they are under pressure to reduce the times that patients stay in their hospitals. So they have an interest uh, in effectiveness in, in, and, in, and, in, and in low cost, but they also are aware they don't want to create island solutions. They don't want to deal with multiple portals. They would like to have interoperability, but they lack the power, the, the, the purchasing power to um, to, to get the industry, to get all of them uh, uh, together. 
Um, and it's really ultimately the healthcare systems with a kind of a holistic view of the healthcare systems um, and of their populations. They are interested in efficiency, sustainability. They are also interested in interoperability. They don't want island solutions. They ideally want to uh, uh, make, make sure that um, personal connected health devices ultimately plug into uh, what could be an electronic um, IT and electronic health record backbone. So we're really talking about healthcare systems. I think the Estonian lady in the panel before talked about this. Um, it is really the governments um, that have this responsibility of setting healthcare policy and strategy. Uh, they provide the backbones. Um, they want to also drive integration to save costs. They are also very often the people who can issue guidance for the buyers, the healthcare providers who invest, who pay money uh, for this. So it is them that we're hoping to um, persuade to adopt standards, to adopt Continua and, and other relevant uh, uh, standards. So um, I, in my last remaining six minutes or less, uh, I will just talk about what's happening on the, in the area of Continua adoption. So this is a slide that's kind of like a moving target. Um, so we're having, we've had now a number of governments in Europe um, go and, if, and send signals to the market, send signals to their uh, stakeholders that we're really interested in Continua. The start was made in Denmark in 2012. Uh, uh, they started already issuing a telemedicine a reference architecture uh, uh, and they, they referenced Continua. Uh, Norway in December 2014, it was even, even uh, an act of parliament in, in, in Norway um, to say we want to build our telemedicine infrastructure on on standards. In Austria, we're expecting in December 2016, so in, in less than six, seven weeks or so, to have a technical guideline, specify uh, Continua guidelines. Um, I was last week in Switzerland and the National Competence Center for, uh, for, for Switzerland, the eHealth Swiss, is currently conducting a market consultation with all the stakeholders. Should we go the Continua route? Um, for those of you, of you who are interested, um, you're welcome to join this consultation. It's open still until December, but you have to either speak German or French. Um, uh, so with that, uh, the other thing uh, that, that happened is that we as Continua, we as PCHA, um, we uh, were able to assemble a, a coalition of, of countries, of member states, of governments, to say, we actually would really like you, the eHealth Network, the European institutions out there, to issue more guidance, to issue more um, leadership, to provide more leadership in the area of personal connected health interoperability. So a letter was sent and, and signed and, and sent in June 2016, and we're hoping that this is one, this is one letter that will pro provide renewed impetus um, to the SDO platform that the eHealth network is, uh, is very interested in having presented to, uh, to this body of member states uh, when the joint action to support the eHealth network will do its job. Um, almost uh, final slide. What we're doing now at Continua, we're actually talking to all of these governments, all of these healthcare systems, and what we're trying to put together is a so-called adoption playbook where we're documenting the, the lessons that, uh, and the steps that many of these member, member states have, have, um, have taken to adopt Continua to move it forward. It will also provide, of course, a rationale for Continua. We'll showcase how we interact with other relevant standards bodies. Um, it's, it's supposed to be, it will be a, a quite kind of a how-to guide uh, with, with, these, with, the, with lessons, learnings from adopter countries, case studies. Um, we will uh, move this forward in an event uh, at our conference next, next month, no, two months from now, uh, in December, and we're hoping to release that uh, in February 2017. Um, with that, I'd, like, I'd love to invite you for questions, but I think Alexander is still keen to maintain his role as a, um, to hold questions until later, so with that then, I thank you very much for your uh, interest and attention, and there will be a test.